ladies and gentlemen, I am the Top Hat Gaming Man and it is time for another one of my fantastic unboxing videos. Yeah! It's that time once again when I reveal even more stuff within the depths of my massive games collection. Earlier this week on my channel, I released a little video which was all about why the NES failed in Europe. The comment section on this one was quite hilarious really, as many of those um, American Nintendo jihadists who have all been brainwashed by that company, they all come after me and started writing all these horrible comments. It was amazing. <laughs> Anyway, it was great. It's, it's always nice to have a little debate, but just to prove it to you all, I don't hate Nintendo. I bloody love Nintendo. I just like to help to get the true history of the world out there gaming-wise. So today, we are going to unbox my boxed NES collection, because you see, um, I have quite a large, well not a large one compared to Americans, because like I said, the NES was huge there, but I do have um, a few hundred games um, from all different parts of the world, because as I said, certain games wasn't even released here. So I've got Poway games, which was released in the UK, I've got some Pow B games, which was released in some other European countries, and I've got NTSC games amongst this as well, which were released in America. So, let's have a look at some of these. Yeah! Okay, here we go, look at that. The NES isn't my favourite system, but, um, and I certainly have no nostalgia regarding it, but again, you cannot deny how good the library of games are for this one. I actually got mine whilst I was waiting for my SNES for Christmas. Um, I loved bloody Mario World on my uncle's SNES. So um, my parents, they picked up an NES for me whilst I was waiting. I remember when I saw it for the first time, I was like, what's that bloody square looking VCR thing? That's not Nintendo. That doesn't look like any Nintendo I've ever seen. And um, it had Mario games with it. So the first one, um, Super Mario Brothers. Um, had a little go on it and I remember thinking, Ugh, this looks ugly. I've never seen games this ugly at home before. Uh, because obviously the SNES uh, the graphics looked a lot better and even uh, my bloody Amstrad CPC microcomputer I grew up on appeared to have um, graphics better than the original Super Mario Brothers game. But the minute I played it, I have to say I absolutely loved it. Um, it just proves never judge a game on its graphics because I love this game just as much as I loved um, Super Mario World. Uh, the other game I really remember playing from my original NES batch was um, Super Mario 2, um, you know, Doki Doki Panic, the same old crappy story we hear. Again, in Europe, the same as the United States, we got this version of Super Mario Brothers 2. Um, I remember my NES had a lot of problems. Do you remember that annoying white flicker screen where you had to blow the cartridges over and over again and then the bloody thing still wouldn't work properly because it was so badly built? But, um, so the minute I got a Super Nintendo, it came with Mario All-Stars, and I had these two games on it, which were my favourite games on the platform, so I literally chucked my first NES in the bin. I looked at it, it was broken. That white flicker screen was just not acceptable, was it? Let's be honest. So it went in the bin. Super Mario Bros. 3, again, I played this within Mario All-Stars, but I did have experience playing the game before Mario All-Stars was released. Basically, in the pubs around London, you used to get these arcade units and they would have preloaded on them loads of um, NES games, if I remember. So I played some of the NES library on there and I remember really enjoying Super Mario Bros. 3. So it was great when I got Mario All-Stars, I had it my own copy at home. <laughs> and in a way, though, I must say, I was a little bit disappointed with Mario All-Stars. Because I remember the advertising campaign with um, Rick Mao in the adverts. They managed to make the game look like it was four brand new Mario games. So I was a little bit sad when three out of four of them I'd already played. Um, if any of you other Europeans felt that, or anyone actually, if anyone else had that same experience, let me know in the comments section. Or whether it's just me who was being a bloody idiot regarding that. <laughs> I don't like re-releases then. I mean, I don't like re-releases now. So I certainly didn't like re-releases then, because by then, it caught me completely by surprise. Who did they bloody think they were releasing the same content twice? That, it was despicable to, to my young self. Punch out. Always bloody fun. I don't think it's anywhere near as good as um, 
the Wii version we got um, in the mid 2000s, but great fun nonetheless. Ah, re regarding punch out, check out a little video on my channel called um, the GBA Hidden Punch Out Game. It's rather educational and it's all about a little hidden gem. So take that little plug there. Captain Skyhawk. Can't say I've ever played that one. I probably got it in the bundle. A boy and his blob. I can't say I've got the patience for this one. I've had to, given this one a go, but I've not enjoyed what I've played, so I've left it alone. Street Gangs. Um, this one, in the United States, if I'm correct, was released as River City Ransom. A very enjoyable little title. Bubble Bobble. Who doesn't like bloody Bubble Bobble? I remember playing this one in the arcades in Greece a hell of a lot when I was bloody young. Great title. But I didn't get it on the NES till fairly recently. But the more copies of Bubble Bobble I have for the more platforms, the better. It's great. DuckTales. Again, a fantastic game and one, again, I grew up with myself. Um, it was also released on the Game Boy, basically the same game, only in black and white. So I used to love this on the Game Boy, but now I've acquired um, an NES copy as well, which is the same game but in colour. Great little game, and also I'll give a nice mention to the PS3 reboot. It is a re-release, fair enough, but at least they've given it a fair amount of time before they have made an updated version of DuckTales. It isn't like when they released The Last of Us on the PlayStation 3, then like a few months later they released it again on the PlayStation 4. What the bloody hell was that all about? They did that with GTA 5 as well. Did any of you actually buy it twice? It was just bizarre, wasn't it? Can't believe they was doing that for a few years. I mean, it literally put me off the Xbox One and PS4 for so long because they just released games from the PS3 and Xbox 360 from a few months back. It was, it was a terrible time to be a gamer. Pirates, again, never played it. Bundle game. The Adventure of Link, another journey of ultimate challenge in the fantasy world of Hyrule. Now Zelda 2, I bloody love this game. It really annoys me when people criticise it actually, because um, the only reason people criticise Zelda 2, and the same reason they criticise um, uh, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, is um, because the games are quite cryptic, and because the angry video game nerd said so. But you can't criticise these games unless you criticise the first Legend of Zelda game as well. All three of those games are equally cryptic and you need like strategy guides to basically play through any of them in my opinion because they are that cryptic. But the minute you get strategy guides or just look it up online, they're easy to play and they're great fun. So I would highly recommend Zelda 2. I actually think it's better than the original Legend of Zelda game actually. It's certainly much more of a challenge. Like you'd feel genuinely fulfilled when you manage to beat this game. It's great fun. Dr. Mario, classic puzzle game. Again, who doesn't like Dr. Mario? Great little fun game. Uh, in the same way as Tetris. Not quite as good as Tetris, but it's a good effort by Nintendo. Double Dragon 2. Hmm. I can't say I was ever that impressed with the Double Dragon series, not growing up with it. There's um, a lot of um, bloody side-scrolling beat-em-up games, which I think are a lot better, so that's all I have to say about that, really. Looking at this, this game was from Curry's, so obviously it wasn't just bloody boots that um, sold NES games. Kirby's Adventure. Hmm, this one's just reminded me. Uh, I picked up this one when I bought my second NES when I was 16 years old. Uh, I got it from a bloody boot sale. I think it was about £30 in about 30 games. And um, Kirby's Adventure was the one I had the most fun with, if I remember, out of that batch. It's, it's a really strong um, platforming game. And it, it, look, it looks a lot better than you would expect from an NES game. So, great fun. Kirby, love it. Donkey Kong Classics. And um, I found this game highly amusing because... Mario is a bloody villain in it. That would blow a child's little mind, wouldn't it? You've just had Mario promoted to you by playing the snares as the hero, and then he's suddenly the villain. You learn new things every day, I suppose. I'm still learning new things now. And it's why each and every one of you should watch my channel, because I have plenty to teach you as well. In fact, no, just sit there and watch my videos. I'm not going to teach you. You're going to teach you. What else? Time Lord, nothing to say about that. Let's get rid of the ones I've got nothing to say about, really. 
Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninjas, To The Earth, never really enjoyed that. Gauntlet 2, great little arcade fun game. I do like Gauntlet 2, otherwise, although it can get a bit frustrating at times when you've literally got everything coming at you and I can't remember you touch things. I think they're like barrier things and they free you and you go, eh, eh. that bit's really annoying, but apart from that, I do enjoy a little bit of Gauntlet. Strider, it's okay. But um, I feel the Sega versions of this game are far superior to the Nintendo versions, so no, not for me. Oh my god. Bart Simpson versus the bloody Space Mutants. This was one of my um, original games I had on the NES, actually, again when I was nine years old, and um, I bloody hated this game. It was bloody frustrating, so it's such an annoying game. Stealth, nothing to say about that. Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout, more AVGN tripe. Uh, Metroid. Most people bloody love Metroid from what I hear, but again, it's not really one I'm that big a fan of myself, especially the one on the SNES. I've got more to say about the SNES one than the NES one because I grew up with the SNES game and um, I just felt that, again, it's quite cryptic. But it's more the fact that the, the, wall drop, the wall jump mechanic is just completely broken. I, I, even now, I can't execute it right. Maybe it's a rhythm thing because I've got bad bloody rhythm. But the minute it gets to the wall jump start of the game, that's a game breaking thing for me. I can't, I won't play it past that moment. So that's my thoughts on Metroid. Battletoads versus Double Dragon. Actually, out of the Double Dragon games or Battletoads, this is my favourite. This one is bloody good fun. Kid Icarus. Again, quite good fun, quite like Kid Icarus, but very, very bloody difficult. I don't think I've ever got past the fourth stage. Not that I've ever put that much in attempting, but the first four stages are fun, but then I'm just stuck and screwed past that. All six of the Mega Man games I have here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to say I do like Mega Man. Mega Man 2 is my favourite out of these, and the first one I acquired. Um, Mega Man 1, 2, 3 and 4 are all UK PAL A. 5 is PAL B as it was, wasn't released in the UK but it was released in the rest of Europe. Mega Man 6 bypassed Europe altogether so my copy of that is bloody American. So loads of bloody um, Mega Man games. I've got these in this bloody big pile down here. What else? Uh, Black Box games. Tennis. Excite Bike. I do like a bit of Excite Bike. Wild Gunman. Balloon Fight, that's a good game. Just a simple, basic arcade game. But yeah, that's a good, good fun. I enjoy that. What else? Gyro Might, I've never had a Rob the Bloody Robot, so I've never played that one. Duck Hunt, again, a childhood game. I really, I did quite enjoy that, the light gun. It was, it was functional, I suppose. But again, I did always prefer my Super Scope and playing Yoshi Safari on the snares. Now, now that's nostalgia. Golf. That's only the first layer. Let's see if I can get through this next layer quicker than I did the first, because I did ramble a little bit. And maybe this layer has less to talk about. Who knows? California Games. Not a big fan of California Games, but I am even more of, I'm even less of a fan of actual California. I have everywhere I went to in the States. I bloody hated California. Hollywood, yuck. LA, yuck. Venice Beach, yuck. It was literally the most horrible, disgusting, hipster place I've ever been in my life. And the whole place just stunk of cannabis. And I had all these idiots trying to sell me bloody mixtapes. Mixtapes! Do I look like I'd listen to a bloody rap mixtape to you? No! So why do they keep shoving them in my face? Iron Sword, Wizard and Warriors 2. Um, if I remember, this one is... I could be completely wrong here. And talking, um, talking wrong, but I think this was made by the same developers as Plock in their earlier years. Uh, the Pickford Brothers. Top Gun, never been a fan. The Hunt for Red October, Skate or Die, Low G Man, Tom and Jerry, Soul Stice, McDonald's Land. Um, if I remember correctly, um, my brother's best friend in school was he was one of the poor kids. And he had an NES, if I remember, whilst the rest of us had Mega Drives and Super Nintendos. And I remember he used to joke about um, playing this game a lot of his friends, and there was actually a game about McDonald's! Like, why would anyone want a game about a bloody lowbrow fast food chain? Absolutely outrageous, particularly in England. Jurassic Park. 
Um, what have I got to say about this? Um, the music. The music's impressive. Um, you've got a song that sounds pretty much the same as um, the theme of the game Comic Bakery on the um, C64, which I used in my NES Failure video. Great music track. Um, Super Spike V-Ball, Fester's Quest, Robocop, Pro, RC Pro AM, that was quite fun. Rad Racer, um, it's okay. Um, I'm just pleased to have it within all 97 of my games. Um, Mission Impossible, Faxanadu, Tecmo World Wrestling. In my opinion, this one is by far the best wrestling game on the NES. The NES doesn't really have a great selection of wrestling games, I must say. But if you have to play one, this one is the best. World Cup, a fantastic football game. If, um, if I was to play any, regardless of the system, World Cup is the one I choose. Screw FIFA, screw Pro Evolution Soccer. Nintendo, Nintendo World Cup is where it's all about. And I've made a video on that as well, actually. I forgot I've made a video about two NES games. I thought it was only one. Yes, that's reminded me. Solar Jet Man. Um, Power Blade. Quite a popular title by Taito in the United States, if I'm correct. Uh, but I've never really got on with it. Again, this is one I keep meaning to play, which is apparently an alright game by Capcom. Disney Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. So I'd like to try that at some point down the line. Um, Paperboy. Again, I, this I had but as on the Game Boy rather than the NES. It's alright, but it always feels like this game would be a lot more fun if you was actually aiming to break the windows and do damage with the papers. Um, that's my opinion anyway on the game. Pinbot, a little pinball game. Um, some sort of sports pack. Um, Super Sports Challenge 4. Terminator 2. Pac-Man, right, this one I got when I was 16, again in that, that, that batch I talked about from the boot sale. This is a really good conversion of the arcade game Pac-Man. Um, if I remember, this was the first copy of Pac-Man I think I actually owned myself. So I had a lot of fun with this game. Yeah, if you want to play um, a good conversion of Pac-Man, the NES version is, is bloody good, I have to say. Contra, again, a game I purchased in America. Um, our version is called Probotector, and you play as a bloody robot instead for some reason. Don't know why. I'm no expert in NES. WrestleMania, horrible game. Hulk Hogan, don't know what to say about that. Simon's Quest, I talked all about that earlier when I talked about um, Zelda 2. Fantastic, fantastic game. Five stars, I love it. Turtles, don't like turtles, never have done to be honest. Uh, probably why the NES went completely under my radar, because learning over the last few days, that was the one time that NES started doing well in um, the UK, from what I've just heard. Uh, basically they had this turtles game bundled with the NES, and in an attempt to try and get the NES over with the public, because everyone bloody loved turtles, so they hooked in a Turtles game with the console, and apparently that did shift some of the NES units, but I was never a fan of Turtles for some reason, it just, did. It just never floated my boat, so I completely bypassed that one. Days of Thunder, nothing really to say about that. Turbo Racing, ah, the first Castlevania game, jolly good fun, but we all know that. Joe and Matt, Caveman Ninja, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, a lot of Yanks love this one as far as I'm aware, but again, haven't really given it the time of day yet. I've got so many games in my collection that it takes me a while to get around to certain ones, and this is certainly one of those games I'd like to try down the line. Top Gun, ah, Marble Madness. Who doesn't love Marble Madness? Again, I made a video about it on my channel. I think on my channel I played through and completed the Mega Drive version of the game. Bloody love Marble Madness. Gremlins 2. Again, had this game, but I had the Game Boy version. I don't remember it being particularly impressive, though. Panic Restaurant. Um, in the United States, as far as I'm aware, this is one of the more rare games on the system. It's still pretty rare and expensive here, but it doesn't hit the same dizzying heights as uh, the United States version. Uh, a very high quality um, side-scrolling platform, but I don't advise anyone to play it. It's really, really good. Final Fantasy. What you'd expect really on Final Fantasy. Again, I covered this game recently on my channel. So if you want to watch my review of the original Final Fantasy game, then I suggest you look through my videos and give that a click. Um, isolated Warrior, 
WrestleMania challenge again, a crap wrestling game. Star Wars, a crap Star Wars game. So many of these license games are bad. WrestleMania Steel Cage, an even worse crap wrestling game. Uh, Flintstones, Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. If you're going to go for a bloody Flintstones game on well, yes, go for this one. It's basically equal to the other Flintstones game, um, that dinosaur pick one, only you don't have to pay bloody £500 for it. You get this one for like 20 quid and get the same experience. Basically, the other, one, the other Flintstones game is just one of those games for mad collectors. Ugh. I'm not mad, by the way. I only fork out huge money on good games. I'm, I'm, very, I'm a very sane man. Shadowgate, a weird like point and click adventure. I suppose if you're going to play a point and click, go for the PC version. Go for a microcomputer version. This is what I'm saying. The NES has its limitations, whereas in some ways the microcomputers were better. So if you're going to play Shadowgate, play it on a microcomputer. Bureau Fighter, didn't really enjoy that. Home Alone 2, no comment. NES Open Tournament Golf, um, not played it actually. I do really enjoy um, the Mario Golf games post um, Mario Golf 64 though. They're actually jolly good fun. And I don't even bloody play golf. Although I must say, I would guess I look like I probably do love a game of golf, but or a round of golf as they would say, but no, no, no. A um, couple more, nothing really to say really. Rygar, Wrath of Black Manta. But yes, anyway. Thank you for watching my video about my boxed NES games, and now you've seen every single one of them. The runtime on this was bloody long, so if you're still here at the moment, you deserve to give yourself a little self-pat on the back. If you've done that, let me know in the comment section. Cheerio!